Alrighty, folks. It is so good to see you all. Let me pop over here where y'all can see me too. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in to Adobe Live. It is so great to be here. I see so many familiar faces in the live chat. Kevin General Kenobi. Hello there. I see Sam Peterson, the one and only. Andrew, welcome in. Uh, I see Robert. Um, Sean, it is good to see all of you folks. Welcome in. Barbara, hello. It's good to see you again, my friends. Um, thank you all for joining. I'm super pumped. Um, quick uh, few points. Uh, for those of you who are watching the live chat, today is a holiday in the US and while we will not have regularly scheduled blocks of shows, all of the daily creative challenges are going to be live today. So if you are following along with those, please definitely stay tuned because the rest of our challenges for the day will be broadcast. Um, and uh, yeah, also this is the for also for those of you who are watching live this is the final week of this particular set um so this friday what day is friday friday is cosplay day so i'm gonna be in costume of um, this friday for our community day and i hope that you folks are too if you folks want to post pictures into the discord along with your challenge entries you definitely should speaking of the discord you can check that out if you head over to ooh, Ooh, ooh. <laughs> if you head over to bit.ly slash PS Discord, making sure that P and S are capitalized. Um, so let's jump into our challenge for the day. If you click the link uh, in the description, it will open a Photoshop document for you, which looks a little something like this. Let me prop my screen up here and pop over. So this is challenge number six, Photoshop editing challenge, create a geometric design with photos by using the liquify and transform tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose some geometric shapes and I'm going to use a square today, but we are going to take our photo of an orange um, and we are going to warp it and liquify it and transform it until it looks as if it is naturally fitting within our geometric shape. We're going to make it look like oranges are naturally square. And you can choose whichever uh, kind of fruit or vegetable or something that you would like. You can choose a different shape. Maybe choose a halved strawberry and make it look like a perfect triangle. Whichever you want. It would be cool too if you chose a strawberry and made it a circle. Just something that that fruit is not naturally shaped like. And we're going to do um, some transforming around and I'm going to show you how you can make it look natural, which is actually pretty fun. So. Um, I might, what I might do is show you my Martha Stewart piece already so you can see what I mean by that and then I'll show you how I got there. So this is my uh, finished piece. Um, and as you can see, it looks very natural. I've got the rind in here. I've got the um, the actual meat of the fruit in there. I've got the outside of our orange, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna dive in and we're gonna do this today. Now, I have chosen this orange uh, image from the free section of Adobe Stock. If you would like to grab a fruit to use, all you have to do is head over there. Um, I have mine in my libraries, but if you would like to go to stock.adobe.com um, and check out all of the images which are available to you in the free section, um, all you have to do is head over to um, stock.adobe.com and it will look a little something like this. If I pop this over here, you can see there's plenty of awesome fruits. There's a, a free lemon right there on the top and you can snag that. And I would suggest you choose a photo that shows the center of the fruit as well as the outside skin of the fruit because we are going to be using as many parts of this as we can. Um, so head over there, snag yourself an image and then dive in with me. So um, I'm going to go ahead and double click my uh, fruit here um, from my libraries and it will open that file for me. And all I did in order to snag these images is I made sure to select my object selection tool, which is W on your keyboard. Uh, and I can come over here and just tap this um, and it will select that for me. 
Um, and then I hit Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac, and it just duplicates selection here. So you can see I've got that on another layer. Um, and I can do the same thing with my outside of my orange here. Um, it will select that for me and I'll do the same thing, control J. And this is just really nice uh, to, like a nice photo to use because it's isolated. Um, quick tip, if you're searching in uh, Adobe Stock for an, uh, an item or an object and you want it to be just that object without any crazy background so that it's easier to select, type in your keyword followed by the word isolated and you will get a lot of photos like this that are just the isolated image instead of it in a scene that you have to work harder to cut out. Um, so I'm gonna grab these two layers and I'm just gonna bring these over to my challenge six file and just drop them right in. Um, I'm also going to hide my background and my info, which should be sectioned off really nicely for you folks. Um, actually first, what I'm gonna do is make a new layer with Control Shift N or Command Shift N if you are on a Mac. I'll grab my paint bucket tool and I'm gonna sample this light color around the stroke here. Uh, and I will paint bucket in uh, just a background just so I can see everything that I'm working with here. So then when I select my oranges, I can drag them out here into a nice free open space. So how are we going to make this look like a square? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a square with my rectangle tool uh, and I'm gonna hold shift and kind of drag, drag a square out here, maybe round these corners just a little bit, um, just so that I have a base to go on and I'll make it a darker color than everything else so that I can see it really well. Um, and I will just bring this right over here uh, and I'm gonna use this as a guide of sorts so that I know where exactly I want to put all these pieces of my, uh, my orange. Next, I'm going to come over, I'll go ahead and drag this um, orange so it's right above our rectangle. Um, next, I'm going to kind of cut out my, uh, the, the meat of our fruit here because we're gonna free transform that um, to make it look like it is naturally growing in a square. So it's not just about using liquify to push and pull this, we're really gonna do some compositing here to make this look very um, convincing. So uh, with my lasso tool, I am just, let me make sure I'm not on my polygon lasso tool, but on my regular lasso tool, I am just gonna come in here and select this just like that. Um, and I'm using a stylus here, but you can use your mouse or what you could do um, is you could come over to your elliptical marquee tool um, and hold shift and drag out a circle and then hold the space bar to uh, kind of move that around into place. So that works as well. Uh, and I will control J just to duplicate that piece. I'll move this up here and keep our assets all together. Um, so now we have just this circular portion here. Um, and I am actually going to control T to free transform this, but we're not just going to free transform it the way that you probably have before where you can just uh, drag the corners in and out. We're going to right click it after we've entered into free transform mode and we're gonna go to warp. Um, so warp is really cool. You can see I can, I can really warp this around and do some crazy stuff. Um, but what I'd like to do is hold control and you can see I can add these interesting little warp points here wherever I like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a warp point here on the edge, here on the edge, um, and then I will also add one here. And that just gives this little warp grid for me here on the edges of this, which I can click and drag and, and kind of bring these into a square shape. And it looks a little odd, but as I said, we're gonna get into some major compositing here, which will make this look quite realistic. Um, and the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I could push and pull all I wanted to make this a square, but as you can see very, very quickly here with these extra points, um, I can drag this and it really does look very like um, it's naturally a square. So these corners are getting pulled while these um, upper, bottom, uh, left and right portions are not. So it looks like the meat of that fruit really expands into a square shape rather than um, 
kind of pushing and pulling all of it till it doesn't really look very realistic. Um, so we've got that, but now we need to use the other portions of our, um, of our stock photo um, to kind of blend even more and make this look really, really convincing. So I might tweak these just a tiny bit more and I'll go ahead and hit enter. Um, and you can see now I've got this uh, square shape and it does have um, some issues around the very edge of it, but we are gonna cover that up. So I personally would just as soon not worry about that. Why waste the time cleaning that up? If we know we're going to cover it with something else, um, kind of just helps push your workflow further instead of getting stuck on tiny details. So um, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to dive into another uh, kind of way to free transform elements of your piece, and that is puppet warp. Puppet warp is one of my favorite nifty little things and I don't use it often, but when I do, it is the perfect tool that I need. So what we're gonna do is unhide our orange again here, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do is with my elliptical marquee tool, I will hold shift so that I am dragging out a perfect circle. I don't want it to be too crazy. Let me go ahead and zoom out here. Um, we'll drag out a circle and then we'll select all of this and then what i'm going to do is first of all make sure i'm on the right layer to be selecting things i will drag out another elliptical <laughs> marquee um, and hold alt let's see if i can just go ahead actually i'm going to drag it out before i hold alt i'll hold the space bar and what i want to do is i want to select only the rind in here so what i'm doing is i'm dragging this out and i should be able to after i do a little bit of this let me kind of get this really on the edge here so i'm selecting everything maybe make that just slightly bigger i should be able to can i do this I'm trying to deselect, but I might not be able to do that actually. So what I will do actually um, instead is I will um, select around. This will be easier. I will select around and then with my lasso tool, I will come in and I will hold alt and you can see how that little um, icon there changes to a minus and I will just deselect out of the center here because I only want that rind. I don't want the middle uh, meat of this. Another way you could do it um, is you could, so I could control J um, and what that does is just give me that rind piece. Another way that you could do that is instead of using two different selections is you could um, select only this portion and you could right click it and say select inverse and control J um, or you could leave it like this and you could actually we will leave it on select inverse and you could mask it so that you have it um, but it's really up to you what you would like to do I'm gonna go ahead and control J just so that I keep this original layer that I'm working with here um, and what I will do is I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna use my puppet work tool. Now I might end up needing to cut this into little pieces, but I think that I can do it just like this. So I'll go to uh, edit puppet warp um, and it does add um, points all throughout. So keep in mind if you have something that is, um, let me go ahead and actually escape and make sure I turn this off. Um, if you have something that is um, all connected on all sides, it's going to add points and a grid for you in between all of those empty spaces, uh, but it should work. So let's go to Puppet Warp and I'm gonna add some little points. So I'm just gonna tap some points um, onto this here uh, at all of the corners, the left and right sides and the top and bottom. And then I'm going to kind of drag this in and I'm going to shape it around where I want it and I should be able to you know if you need to just add some more points um, just to really sort of form this around where you want and my goal here is to form it in a way that allows me to kind of get this nice straight uh, square cubic kind of vibe um, and I'm gonna try and form it into the shape of my original square here that I'm that I am using. Um, and I can 
I should be able to cut points as well if I hold, uh, that's Alt, holding Alt just to remove some points. Um, and you can add and subtract as many as you want. Um, this is kind of working for me, honestly. I might pull this down, add another point here and make sure I just drag that. Maybe pull this up just a little bit. Um, and it takes a little bit of tweaking, but it's, it's, it's relatively fun. Um, to be perfectly honest, it's pretty satisfying to be able to do. Um, so I'll bring that in here, add another point here just to, just to pull that in. And I'm just trying to shape the rind into a square. Um, and it is so nice to be able to do it this way instead of, um, I, I don't know how you folks would do this um, if you were not using Puppet Warp Tool, but when I did not have Puppet Warp, um, what I was doing was selecting teeny tiny portions of my image. Um, and I was just like nudging it and and shaping it maybe using the liquify tool only to try and kind of pull it into place and it doesn't always do what you hope it would do when you try to warp and transform that way um it you you get you leave a lot of room for error and a lot of necessary cleanup um, when you do it that way and i would just as soon find a way to kind of warp it into a shape like this that's a lot easier to manage so i'll hit um enter um, and you can see it also preserves really well um the quality of our image here so there is some pushing and pulling um, but honestly, for what we have done, we still have like a very realistic looking slice of an orange rind, um, which we will alter and edit as we go. Um, another reason why I really like to use Puppet Warp for this is because um, it allows me to, instead of like selecting random parts of the rind uh, from the image and warping into each individual piece and then throwing them in, it allows me to kind of preserve the lighting on the rind versus the lighting on the meat of our, um, of our fruit here. Um, so it's just, I just think it's very handy. Um, and then the last thing we will do before we really start getting into liquify and masking and blending all this together is um, I'm going to real quick, I'm just going to transform my rectangle uh, and I will hold shift and alt so that I am ex like, I'm going to size this up to be a little bit larger, but I want to size it up with the ratio constrained. And I also want to size it up from the center. So constraining the ratio, um, you can do that by holding shift, but sizing from the center while holding alt um, at the same time will will do that for you. So I've kind of made this just slightly larger um, because we're going to come over here to our outer skin layer um, and we are going to drag this down on top of our rectangle. I will right click it and create a clipping mask uh, and we'll transform it. We'll bring it over here uh, and I'm going to do a similar thing that I did to our meat of our fruit. Uh, and I will hide these two things just so we can see it, is I'm going to also make the fruit look like it is, like the fruit skin look like it's square. Um, because uh, even though maybe that's not a huge, super big deal, um, I think it just adds a little bit of extra realistic detail to this. So I will control T or command T if you're using a Mac. We'll come into warp. Uh, I'm going to uh, hold control and click at my corners where I want to drag everything again. Um, and I will bring these down to our center here or to our corners here, just so that my orange skin also looks like it's worked into a square and that's gonna be our background. So I'll hit enter. Um, and then I will size this up just a little bit to make sure that it goes to the edges um, so that it's like sort of round, but also kind of pulled into place. And then if I unhide, all this stuff we've got this now this is cool but it needs a tiny bit of uh changing up a little more pizzazz um, and i'm gonna actually transform all of these layers and just bring it into our center here so it looks a little less awkward um, now the first thing that i want to do as i've come to this point is i would like to blend the edge of our rind into the edge of our skin um, and all you have to do to do that is if I come over here to the rind, let me see, I might actually, what I may actually do is um, mask this. So we'll come to that layer, we'll hit our mask button, um, and then with a, let me come over here to our brush, make sure you're selected on your layer mask, 
Um, I'll hit B on my keyboard. I'm sizing it up with my left and right brackets. And I will make sure I'm selected on a soft round opacity. Um, if you've been following around with these challenges, you might have your brush mode set to dissolve. Um, so make sure it's set to normal. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over to the very edge of this. I should be able, make sure I'm selected on black, um, is I should just be able to come over here and very easily start to blend in the sides. So what a mask is doing is if I paint in black on a mask, um, it will subtract from my image. Um, and if I paint in white on a mask, it will re-add whatever was there before um, back to the image without destroying the integrity of your original image. So what I'm doing here is just that, and I can see I'm kind of coming to the edge underneath of the other image that I'm using. So I may actually come over, make sure I'm clicked on my image, control T, and I might just make this slightly larger so that I don't run into that problem come back to my mask um, and paint, just so I'm not hitting that lip of the other design. Um, and so I'm just I'm just painting this out. Now again, I, I do like to use my stylus for this, but if you want, maybe we can zoom in on the top lip here. Um, with my mouse, I can come in and I'm just clicking now. I'm just tapping. So I can come in and tap and I'm hitting that, that lip of that. So I'll just make my brush slightly smaller just so I can blend just the very edge in here. Um, and I don't wanna take too much time and be too precious with it only because we are limited on time. You may spend as long as you want on this portion, um, but we have our rind now uh, blended um, in here, and I might actually make this larger one last time just because um, I want to really make sure that I blend this in well. And let's kind of check these edges. I think um, it's not looking too bad, to be honest, um, especially after I come in here after the fact and kind of clean this up just a little bit. Um, and the goal is just to really blend that in. Um, and I think that we've, I think we've done that. I really do. I think that that's starting to look pretty cool. The only problem with this is um, if I come over here and unhide our original orange piece and let's push this over here so that we can kind of look at it is um, the one thing that this real orange has that my orange does not have is that it has these portions where the rind kind of starts pushing into these slices of the fruit. Um, and our piece does not have that. So you could do that in a lot of different ways. Um, and one of them is, the first thing I'm gonna do is I will select all of these that make up our square here. Um, and I'm going to right click and convert to smart object. So it's all the same. Uh, we're gonna come up to filter and go to liquify. Um, we should open our liquify here and then what I can do is I can come in I can zoom in a little bit um, Maybe that's too much. Let's bring this down here and what I could do with our um, uh, Our forward warp tool is I can come in and I can start to pull in these little pieces here um, That should kind of bring in these little white areas um, as we as we want just to kind of like push and pull it you can experiment with as many of these um, as you like as many of these little um, different tools and brushes and things that you have in here um, but that's what I like to do is just to come in and start pulling uh, and pushing these pieces just to kind of give it um, a more realistic vibe um, like these are separated into individual little slices in here it's very natural looking um, and tweak that uh, all you want. And I think we are probably coming to the very end of our show here in just a couple minutes. Um, but uh, I, this is like one of the most satisfying parts. Another thing we could do is use the bloat tool if I wanna hit um, this area with the bloat tool just to kind of make it a little more um, uh, rounded instead of flat. Um, we could come in, what's something else we could do? Uh, let's see, we could go in with a smooth tool. Uh, we could try the pucker tool. I didn't try the pucker tool before, but I'm wondering what maybe that would be like. Um, that's kind of cool. It kind of like brings that corner and I don't really know if I want a sharp corner like that, but you can see how we can go in there um, and really start to bring those white pieces in um, and uh, kind of make it look just a tad more realistic. And if you spend a little bit of time on it um, and kind of come in and really try to uh, bring this uh, image together like so, what you can end up with is if I just hit okay, 
um, will come into my finished piece over here. And this is what I have done. And I got a little more variation here on the ends. Um, I did put a little bit of white on the edges just because I felt like I wanted those pieces to be a little more, um, uh, not 100% square, but give it a little bit of, you know, how this is kind of round and bumpy on the edges. Um, but that's just spending like an extra 15 or so minutes on it than we have to do these 30 minute classes. So I hope that you folks really like this. It's kind of a study in warp, transform, and liquefy tools, as well as um, kind of a miniature compositing challenge that could be very easy because we're getting all of our elements from the same place. Um, I've had a blast doing this challenge for you. I cannot wait to see what you do. Um, if you are participating with me or if you're going to come back later and do um, um, this challenge please post your work in the discord so i can take a look you folks have been blowing minds uh in the discord with all of your awesome challenge entries um and i will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for yet another challenge adios everyone and happy designing